Good afternoon, namaste. A very warm welcome to the World Telecom Standardization Assembly WTSA 2024 Awareness Workshop. I, Jaskirat Singh, along with my colleague Chandrakanta Rathor from TSDSI are your hosts for this workshop. In the beginning, we would like to play a short introductory video of TSDSI. Since the first mobile con made on 31st July 1995, Indian telecom sector has grown as the second largest telecom market in the world, connecting India affordably and transforming our society. Despite the huge diversity in terrain, culture, user base, climate and constrained power supply and high population density, Indians enjoy the lowest telecom tariffs in the world. Therefore, our requirements are different from other regions. The global telecom standards ecosystem has been dominated by 3GPP and ITU. However, India's contribution was not significant until the mid-2010s. A need for an Indian telecommunication standards development organization that can reflect the diverse needs of our market and promote our IP on the global stage was felt. This was acknowledged in the National Telecom Policy 2012. I would expect a standard society to articulate India's concern on the international stage, which are India specific, and the world must listen to that. Because I see electronic manufacturing and communication technology also merging at some point of time. TSDSI is an autonomous, membership based body comprising entities from across the telecom ecosystem and application verticals. We are recognized by DOT as India's Telecom SDO. Soon after inception, we became organizational partner of 3GPP and joined the 1M2M partnership project and the journey continues with further partnership agreements being signed up with other global forums. TSDSI's vision is to ensure that digital communication standards increasingly drive domestic economic and policy activities, thereby creating a leadership position through India's participation in emerging digital communication standards in global SDOs. Our technical activities are carried out in two study groups, networks and services and solutions. Standards development falls into three phases pre-standards, standards and post. Our roadmap is driven by this philosophy and specific topics are taken up in task forces and technology roadmap item proposal forums. TSDSI in a relatively short span of six years has made a mark in the standards world. TSDSI's 1M2M standard for IoT, M2M applications and 3GPP IMT advanced standards for 4G have been transposed as national standards. 3GPP has incorporated support for NAVIC, the navigation system created by ISRO in the relevant 3GPP specifications. Devices supporting NAVIC in addition to GPS are now commercially available in the market. Our latest accomplishment is the incorporation of the TSDSI 5G radio interface technology as an independent technology in the ITUR specifications for IMT 2020. This standard is a major breakthrough for bridging the rural-urban digital divide in 5G deployment due to enhanced coverage. As technology development cycles shrink, spurred by softwareization and disaggregation, India, traditionally a software powerhouse and a huge market, has an opportunity to take a leadership position in the global technology landscape. IP and standards will drive the economic growth. With TSDSI RIT becoming part of the global IMT 2020 specifications, India is poised to play a more active role in the global standards arena. Design local, deploy global. Join us to deliver more such solutions that address the specific requirements of the developing world based on indigenous IP.
Uh, before we start the workshop, here are a few hygiene announcements. All attendees will be in listen-only mode throughout the workshop. If you have any questions for the speakers, please type them in the Q&A tab. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the TSTSI website within the next few days. Speakers are requested to kindly deliver your presentations within the allotted time durations. We are honored to have all the expert speakers with us today. Dr. Abhishek Thakur from IDRBT, Mr. Vishnu Ram from TSDSI, Mr. Sushil Kumar from Telecom Engineering Center, Mr. Abhinash Agarwal from Telecom Engineering Center. Thank you everyone for joining this workshop. I take the pleasure to invite Dr. Abhishek Thakur, TSDSI WTSA24 Task Force from IDRBT to set the context for today's workshop and thereafter conduct the proceedings. Abhishek Thakur works on 5G use case labs for BFS, open source technologies and FinTech collaboration at Institute for Development and Research in Banking Technology. His research interests include multimedia communications, financial inclusion and rural ICT deployments. In a career spanning 25 years split across industry and academia, he has developed several global solutions for both product and services based organizations. Sir, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jaskirat. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, request Chandrakanta to present the slides, please. Yes, sir. So it's a pleasure to welcome you all to the awareness workshop for the World Telecom Standardization Assembly 2024. Uh, and on behalf of the task force, we invite you all to actively contribute on it. Uh, next slide, please. Quickly providing some perspective. In 2020, uh, we were to host the WTSA, uh, which because of pandemic and other reasons, shifted to WTSA 2024. As far uh, as part of this task force uh, that we are looking at uh, over the next nine months to 12 months, uh, we are happy to have stakeholders from various organizations, including network operators, telecom service providers, OEMs, cross vertical user groups, ICT solution providers and system integrators, researchers, as well as academia and beyond. Objective of the task force is primarily to engage the TSDSI members to review and provide inputs regarding the WTSA resolutions. We will be preparing draft resolutions or helping modify or bring them to better shape. Vishnu will be talking more about it shortly. We would be looking at recommended and recommending suitable proposals and draft resolution for the Asia Pacific tele uh, te Telecom preparatory stages. And then further collaboration with TEC, I'm sure Sushil sir and others will talk about it as we go further in the workshop today. And finally, we would also be handling comments and presenting proposals at the APT and WTSA 2024. As task force, our key deliverables are to help revise drafts with changes and also work with the stakeholders to come out with new proposed resolutions. Next slide, please. So till March 2024, which is when we will be hosting the WTSA, we are looking at discussions on draft resolutions and propositions, uh, and then submitting proposals based on recommendations of the discussions to the standards committees, and finally present and rework in various preparatory meetings of both for TEC DOT and for the support for India's positions related to APT preparatory stage as per process and guidelines from TEC and DOT. So with this uh, brief, I would now uh, request Sushil sir uh, to deliver the 
opening remarks can we have sushil sir's bio please uh, sushil sir uh, has been working as ddg telecom uh, ddg in tec and leading the iot division since 2014 he is an officer of the 1987 batch of its prior to this he served in various positions and also as head of districts for 23 years in bsnl and dot sir yeah uh, thank you again good afternoon to everyone so let me share the some of the slides uh, it's uh, uh, an honor uh, to be the part of uh, the wtsa preparation and uh, as india is hosting the wtsa 24 it becomes our uh, responsibility moral responsibility to lead uh, the standardization work and uh, Uh, we should change uh, the uh, thinking of uh, uh, the people, uh, the what the people says across the globe. That uh, uh, like uh, the contributions and the participation from India is much lesser uh, as compared to other countries like China, uh, Japan, and the Korea. So uh, we have to change this uh, thought of the people and uh, let us uh, uh, try to participate. Uh, and uh, lead the resolutions uh, in asia pacific uh, this uh, uh, regarding tec uh, i think uh, uh, everybody knows it is uh, the national standards body nsp for telecom and related ict sector designated national inquiry point for wto tbt technical barrier to trade for telecom sector and bis is for non -te telecom item uh tc is mandated to coordinate with the itut and having national working groups in line with itut study groups uh total 11 study groups are there so tc is having the uh, similar uh, national working groups tc is also participates participating in etsi 1 m2 m3 dpp standardization activities at global level and in tsdsi and pis in india designated authority to implement mandatory testing and certification of telecom equipment and designated authority to accredite uh, the caps conformity assessment bodies uh, regarding the world telecommunication stand standardization assembly uh, the people who are working in this standardization domain uh, they already understand the importance of the wtsa uh, the last wtsa was held uh, in geneva in march 2022 as the study period of uh, this cycle is only of 2 years and earlier it was supposed to be held in 2020 uh, in hyderabad india yeah. but due to covid it could not be held and then uh, uh, the uh, study cycle of uh, the last uh, uh, study period uh, increased from 4 years to 6 years and then wtsa 20 which was held in 2022 the study period is only 2 years now the wtsa 24 that is planned to take place from 15 to 24 october 2024 in new delhi uh, in india uh, this uh, itut study groups uh, uh, this is uh, uh, total 11 study groups are there and uh, uh, this uh, tc is having national working groups having stakeholders from uh, all uh, members from all the related stakeholders uh, including academia standardization bodies and Uh, others uh, now uh, this uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, the participation or the preparing the resolutions it needs the expertise and uh, we hope the tsdsi tc and all the uh, related stakeholders coming together can uh, work on the resolutions but uh, a lot of study of the resolutions is very much required uh, regarding uh, Uh, tec uh, like uh, last time we have submitted a number of uh, resolutions uh, but uh, uh, we found uh, in the wtsa 20 meeting uh, this uh, not much leadership uh, positions uh, were uh, available uh, to india in presenting the uh, resolutions in the wtsa uh, in the last two years uh, uh, we have done uh, some work uh, in tec which have been recognized by itu not related with the wtsa but uh, i thought uh, let it be brought to the notice of uh, all the uh, members uh, participating in this uh, webinar 
uh, like six uh, technical reports of IoT domain have been posted by ITU on its uh, website, recognizing as an important resource for the global community. Uh, this uh, TC technical document code of practice for securing consumer IoT uh, that uh, uh, has been recognized by a number of uh, uh, international bodies like IoT, SF documents. Uh, one is ODMA documents has been uh, released recently. So, uh, uh, secondly, number of uh, uh, recommendations which came uh, out from uh, ITU, uh, TEC has submitted significant contributions and no doubt uh, th those are from the national working groups and then the credit goes to all the members of the national working groups. Uh, we organized uh, uh, the first virtual meeting of uh, ITU TEC study group 20 regional group for Asia Pacific. Uh, and uh, uh, in it, around 120 delegates from 15 countries from Asia Pacific region participated in the meeting. And uh, uh, recently, in Feb uh, March, uh, February, March, this SG9 meeting was held in Bangalore. It was also having a good participation. So, TEC is having uh, uh, the um, uh, experience of uh, organizing uh, the international meetings. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, this uh, uh, People were not hoping that uh, the first regional group meeting will become successful. But uh, uh, now ITU has mentioned that it is uh, uh, having the remarkable uh, uh, success and uh, will uh, uh, will provide a path to other regional bodies to uh, uh, this uh, have so much participation from the regional countries. Uh, then uh, uh, so many other contributions uh, were submitted and uh, uh, like uh, now we let us come to the resolutions. These are uh, some of the list of the resolutions uh, which uh, has been uh, taken from the uh, uh, document of WTSA 2020. And uh, uh, from uh, these resolutions, we can find out which have been modified in 2022 and some uh, are uh, were modified in 2016 and uh, there was no modification in 2022. Some uh, you can find even of 2012, like uh, uh, the resolution 31, it was modified in 2012. Resolution 32 was modified in 2016. So we can find out uh, the important resolutions from the, our country uh, uh, perspective. Uh, like uh, some of these highlighted resolutions, I uh, tried to mention in it resolution 40, that is the regulatory aspect of the work of the ITU uh, telecommunication standardization sector. Resolution 44, bridging the standardization gap between uh, developing and the developed countries. Resolution 50, that is on cyber security. There may be other resolutions also which may be important, but I tried to uh, this uh, uh, mark some of the 15, 16 resolutions which seems to be important, uh, but uh, the, this figure may further increase. Uh, like uh, uh, resolution 58, resolution 61, resolution 64, uh, then uh, resolution 70, 77, 78, uh, then resolution 90, and uh, uh, then uh, resolution 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, and uh, resolution 98. So this, uh, I was going through all the resolutions of the ITU around uh, 15 to 20 days back and uh, then uh, I, I tried to mark something important which I feel, but uh, this uh, may increase or decrease uh, with the discussions of all the uh, um, uh, stakeholders. Uh, then uh, important resolutions which uh, were highlighted that I mentioned in this uh, uh, table, uh, you please have a look, all the members are uh, requested to give their comments on this, uh, whether uh, if uh, something more, some other resolutions are also important, uh, those should also be included in this. Uh, then uh, preparation for WTSA 24, uh, as uh, I mentioned that India is hosting, so now it becomes our moral responsibility to lead the uh, resolutions in the APT countries and uh, uh, should show that uh, uh, a, a, India will be submitting more and more contributions and will uh, lead the standardization work in the next uh, study cycle of the uh, ITUT. So this ITUT uh, has already started the discussions uh, on WTSA 24. 
uh, from 2022 onwards as i uh, participate in study group 20 so even uh, in the study group 20 meeting which was held in july last year there were discussions for the wtsa 24 uh, and uh, uh, the uh, one document td 544 uh, it is having uh, the details uh, about uh, 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 whatever discussions has been uh, held uh, related to WTSA 24 regarding the structure of the questions and uh, other things. Uh, uh, at present, there are seven questions in uh, this uh, study group 20. The number of questions will get added, will get modified. All those things have come uh, in the TT 544. Uh, Dr. Sain, he, Dr. Rami, uh, are leading uh, this document and uh, uh, even the virtual meetings are being held now. Uh, APT organized the first meeting of WTSA 24 preparation in April 2023. Uh, myself and Avinas uh, participated in these meetings. Chairs for the four uh, groups uh, were uh, finalized. India is having the four vice chair positions in APT preparatory group, working group one, working group two and working group three. So as India is hosting WTSA 24, we should start working on the resol resolutions on priority as uh, ITU has already started working. And uh, I would request that the members may participate in the I2T uh, meetings uh, on uh, WTSA 24 so that uh, we will be able to understand uh, uh, about uh, uh, what is uh, going on there and uh, what new uh, things are required to be uh, 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 inserted in the resolutions, what modifications are required and what uh, important technologies uh, are required. Uh, and we can also give our uh, input uh, in the ITU2 uh, meetings on the uh, resolutions of various study groups. Uh, in TEC, uh, advisor Sri Mittar Saab has already directed to constitute a dedicated group in TEC to form uh, work on resolutions. And I think uh, it will come on paper soon and will be uh, will start working. So I would say only this uh, let us uh, uh, take a lead in the standardization work. Uh, and uh, as one of the uh, this uh, conference uh, was held uh, in, in the last month on, uh, uh, in C dot uh, uh, along with TSDSI, TEC, and C dot in which uh, our earlier secretary. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Raja Raman uh, has given a um, uh, this uh, direction uh, in which uh, the TSDSI cha chairman, Mr. Subramaniam, uh, has also presented uh, the how much contributions India is uh, submitting and how much other countries are submitting. So this uh, now it is very much required that uh, we should take the lead uh, in the in WTSA 24 as well as in submitting the contributions and let us work. Uh, jointly hand in hand, uh, TSDSI, TEC, and all uh, stakeholders together. Let us take a lead. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 this is on uh, from my side. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Sushil, sir. Uh, so uh, these are some very good inputs here. We will uh, move on to the next topic. Can we have uh, Vishnu's profile, please? So, so Sushil sir, can we uh, can you stop sharing the screen, please? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. I will stop. Thank yeah. you, sir. So we now invite. Uh, Mr. Vishnu Ram, consultant, TSDSI, to give a presentation on the basics of ITU and WTSA and contributing to WTSA. Uh, Vishnu has hands-on experience in telecom industry for more than two decades, developing and implementing standards and holds 14 international granted patents. He is a senior member of IEEE, an active member of National Working Group 13 in India and Vice Chair of ITUT Focus Group on Autonomous Networks and Co-Convener of ITUT Correspondence Group on Datasets. Vishnu, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Abhishek. Yes, uh, I will 
go through some of these slides. Okay. Mm. Okay, so we here we are uh, in the workshop. Thank you, Abhishek and uh, Sushilji, for that excellent uh, remarks and uh, guidances. Thank you very much. Uh, my my um, task here is to give you a basics of ITU and WTSA. I'll try to do that in uh, twenty minutes or so. And uh, then, based on these basics, we will look at uh, how to some of the tricks and the techniques to contribute to WTSA. Okay, so these are there are two parts. What you are looking at is part one, which is basics of ITU and WTSA. Here, I will cover uh, you know those, those who are familiar with it. ITU has different groups, WTSA, what is WTSA and what, what, what happened. I think some of these already, uh, Bishak and uh, Sushilji already talked about. Uh, but a little bit more detail I'll try to cover because that is the background for the next uh, uh, contributions part that I have. Uh, the way I do it is that I have a set of slides, as you see, and then... Um, I will swap once in a while between this uh, and uh, uh, my screen. I will try to show you a bunch of uh, URLs which I will put in the uh, chat window also. So you will you will get an idea about what I am talking about and also sometimes able to see this uh, the URLs as well. I will try to make sure that you have a uh, you have a good sense of what is going on in ITU and WTSA in the first part. Uh, so with that introduction, um, ITU, as those who don't know, is a United Nations Specialized Agency for ICTs, Information and Communication Technologies. It's um, founded in 1865. Uh, and it has a lot of uh, members, which includes both member states, like India, for example. And uh, there are many companies, universities, and other regional organizations. So it's it's one of the one of the oldest uh, standard bodies, and there are um, um, different uh, uh, working group, uh, study groups, and focus groups, and regional groups under ITU. We'll come to that in a bit. The, why is it important? Uh, today's discussion is important because, uh, as you see here, uh, uh, our Honorable PM uh, inaugurated the IT uh, area of his innovation center. And he also unveiled this, uh, this uh, uh, Bharat 6G vision document. Uh, in that process, there was ITU Secretary General, uh, Dr. Doreen, Ms. Doreen. Uh, she, she told us that India is a role model for countries looking for digital transformation to grow their economies. That's actually the statement that is there in the Press Information Bureau. Um, another interesting aspect here, which is important in today's discussion is also that um, this particular area of office, even though it's in New Delhi, it's actually um, fully funded by India. And uh, it, it serves uh, uh, the region. So that means India, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Maldives, Afghanistan, and Iran. Uh, that means there is an enhanced coordination among nations, uh, basically fostering beneficial economic cooperation in the region and as well as standards cooperation. Another interesting aspect is that reducing the regional divide is one of the key priorities. So that is what um, uh, set forward by the prime minister and we will uh, stick to that. And you also know that G20 presidency is with India now. So that's why the today's discussion is very important. And we will, uh, as Sushilji actually uh, laid out very nicely, uh, this is a uh, this workshop uh, hopefully provides you with the information to engage better with uh, ITU and WTSM. 
So what is all the, what what is this WTA say? It's, it's a World Telecom uh, Standardization Assembly. It's held every four years, uh, as as Abhishek and Sushi just now mentioned, and uh, the it defines the next study period uh, for ITT. That means that the the every four years uh, WTA happens, and what standardization needs to be done during the next batch of uh, next block of four years is is. Uh, Uh, basically uh, laid out in this uh, WTSA. WTSA 24 is planned to take place uh, from 15th to 24th October in New Delhi. Here is a website uh, for it, uh, and uh, you, you should be able to um, look at this uh, website yourself. It is a public website. <clears throat> I will. Um, I will. Uh, Try and ah, here you go. So I will try and uh, put this here. Uh, hopefully you can see it. Yeah. So this is uh, the website for WTSA, and uh, there are in addition to WTSA itself, there are uh, regional coordination meetings that I will come to in the next part, and there are preparatory meetings, and there is also a global standards symposium uh, that happened in 2020. Um, I mean. In 2022, and uh, uh, women in standardization uh, expert group, wise uh, expert group as well, which happens in, um, I should say, preceding uh, the or or along with WTSA also. So you might want to uh, track if you are into if you are into standardization technology field, then you might want to actually look at this kind of preparatory meetings. GSS, women in standardization, wise group, and so on. Uh, this might happen along with uh, the WTSA. Uh, for example, if fifteenth uh, is WTSA starting, fourteenth will be GSS Global Standard Symposium, and so on. In case of doubts, please reach out to us. We'll make sure these these meetings are in your calendar, and you are able to register and join. Um, Regional preparatory meetings. So there is some some introduction required for regional preparatory meetings. Uh, for example, each region, Africa, for example, has African Telecommunication Union. Americas has CTEL. Um, Arab states have uh, their own their own regional preparatory meetings. Asia Pacific. That's important for us. APT is the uh, preparatory meeting which is done from from uh, Asia Pacific. TC is the main focal point for coordination and compilation of various suggestions and inputs from India, aligning with the Asia Pacific Telecommunity APT for WTSA. So basically, whatever we discuss today, uh, whatever happens in the workshop, whatever inputs come from workshop, as well as the task force that uh, Abhishek mentioned, they uh, mm, funnel into uh, the TC. Uh, uh, Group that uh, Sushilji mentioned, and then it is taken to APT and so on. I have a slide towards the end which describes the process. No worries. In Russia, as for example, CIS uh, Regional Commonwealth is the is the um, regional preparatory meetings body. In Europe, uh, CPT handles that preparation. So we are not alone. Uh, That's what I'm trying to tell you that we we have. Uh, mm, Uh, we have uh, other bodies who come up with their own work and such workshops, and other Vishnus, <laughs> other Vishnus who look at this kind of work in the other parts of the world. They br- bring these uh, resolutions or documents which are part of WTSA it, from the preparatory group into uh, from each of these regions into the WTSA. So that's what essentially the process which happens. Um, Some important um, um, wordings, uh, WTSA information. You you will hear these words going forward. Uh, TSB circular that is from the from the Secretariat of ITU that provides general information. Circular comes with numbers. Circular one provides general information on ITU activities. Mm. This this includes updating working methods, responsibility of each study groups, names and affiliations of all chairman, vice chairman, electorate, WTSA training. 
So that is um, that is uh, the circular. The wordings are important. They are not here for no reason. The 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 responsibility of each study group. So this is what we will look at towards the second part of this uh, this my presentation. Uh, to look at what are the responsibilities of each study group and how WTSA is overlapping with that. And names and affiliations, these nominations matters, and that's again, as she mentioned, leadership of these groups are important. Uh, proceedings of WTSA are um, published, and that is available, uh, that is available um, from the a website which is actually here in the chat window. So you should be able to uh, look at it uh, uh, from the website. And uh, the, the um, uh, new study period templates change. Uh, the, if you are into contributing with, uh, uh, with the templates into ITU, then for each new study period, the template might change and you might want to download the latest template. Um, ITU also organizes women in standards group, as I told you previously. The fourth global standard symposium happened, and fifth one is coming up. These these are events which happen along with WTSA. So uh, resolutions. I think uh, Sushil ji already mentioned a, uh, a list of resolutions. We he already mentioned the importance of it. But let me tell you some um, uh, catchy things that you might want to keep in mind. Uh, by the way, the chat window has the link to this, so you should be able to access these resolutions publicly, uh, freely. Uh, WTSA 20, this, uh, due to COVID, it was delayed, as uh, uh, Abhishek mentioned, and finally it happened in Geneva in 2022. And there, are with a bunch of resolutions were discussed, this is just examples. Uh, this is not a complete list. You can see the complete list from the link here. Uh, the the resolutions some some let me let me uh, let me uh, tell you how it looks at least so that you are familiar with it uh, with the resolutions and you can look at them offline and as well as we it makes sense the part two of my presentation makes sense a little bit more so resolution fifty five is a gender perspective mainstreaming a gender perspective in uh, telecommunication standard sector activities. There is a link to that here. Resolution 44 in bridging standardization gap between developing and developed countries. There is a link here as well. And 9D, which looks at open source in ITU telecommunication standards sector. These are just some examples which I randomly picked up. And you, we, will, we will come back to these resolutions, how it looks and so on in the second part as well. Um, just uh, stepping back a little bit, I would like to look at the study groups so that you are, you are familiar with uh, the structure of ITU in there. And uh, these study groups, um, uh, let me see if I have the link for that and make sure that you have uh, the link for that. Here we go. And I get back. All right. These study groups um, actually uh, make the uh, normative standards. So in case uh, you are into, let's say, core network, IMT 2020, IMT 2030, orchestration, RAN, any such functionalities, then probably <clears throat> probably these study groups are the thing for you. It is the place where uh, normative standards are made in addition to supplementary documents, which are informational in nature. So uh, you can actually find the more details of these study groups, a list of study groups, which deals with different uh, themes and descriptions from the link that I gave you in the chat window. Uh, let me take some examples. This is a study group 13 looks at requirements, uh, et cetera, for future networks. So this, this is where a lot of action happens for architectures, use cases, functional capabilities, APIs, et cetera, for future networks. Uh, study group five, for example, looks at uh, EMF, environment, climate action, sustainable circular economy, et cetera. That, that is where uh, a lot of action happens nowadays, right? So there is a lot of uh, uh, talk about uh, circular economy and there's a hot topic as well in study group five. Study group 12 looks at uh, QoS, uh, QoE, performance, et cetera. 
So these are just some examples. You can look at the website to get a little bit more details. Um, regional goods. So that's another uh, um, wordings that you will come across in the types of groups when we, we talk in the context of ITU. Again, some examples only. Mm, and you can find these uh, regional groups. Uh, if you follow the link, you will hit the regional groups. And you can see there are, uh, there are a bunch of regional groups. Seri Group 3, for example, has a regional group for Asia and Oceania. Uh, Seri Group 5 has another one, I think. Um, um, and uh, uh, Sushilji mentioned a uh, regional group as well. There is, uh, that is for Seri Group 20. So these are regional groups which you might uh, uh, find it easier to attend and uh, a, a link towards the study group activities, which I mentioned previously globally, can be introduced via these regional groups, for example. Uh, in addition, study group meetings in India happens uh, once in a while. So you, for example, study group nine meetings, Sujil, you mentioned this, Bang Bangalore, uh, 8 to 9, 8, 9 to 18th May, a couple of months back, actually. Highly successful meeting, and uh, you can see me here. So, yeah, so that, that is the study group meeting which had, which happened uh, in ISC. Uh, focus groups are another wordings, another type of uh, groups that you will come across in ITU, and there are different types of focus groups. This is just examples. And let me try to, actually, you should be able to follow the link and get it, but let me just be very helpful and friendly here. I will put the um, link in the chat window. You can follow that link and reach a complete list of focus groups. So this, uh, for example, the, there is a, a focus group on cost models and affordable data services, FGCD. And that provides a platform for studying, exploring the various cost models and so on. Um, this, uh, uh, some of these focus group meetings happen in India as well. So I would strongly suggest to track uh, these websites of these focus groups. And if you have doubts, if you have uh, questions on how to attend and register, I have a big bunch of slides in the, in the, 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 at the end of this presentation which I'll tell you how to uh, join. And Chandra Gandha and Secretariat colleagues are here who can help you to join these meetings on behalf of uh, TSDS Science One. Uh, there are metaverse, there is testbed federation, et cetera, et cetera. The thing about focus groups, most important thing about focus groups is that most of them are open for participation by um, non-members. So for example, if you are a startup, if you are an academia, then it makes sense uh, to uh, to be part of this focus. So suppose, for example, you are working on metaverse, you are working on some test beds, uh, then this is the forum where you first go, understand the lay of the land, and then um, you make your um, collaborations uh, uh, in this in this focus group, and then take it to regional groups and study. So that there is one way of um, uh, playing in IQ. In case you have doubts, uh, please uh, come back to us and we'll explain the rules of the game. Uh, in addition to this, we also have uh, initiatives. So for example, this one is uh, this one is what I call a pre-standards initiative, AI ML 5G challenge. There is comes under AI for good. A bunch of universities, including IIT Delhi, uh, they uh, come together, produce data, uh, open it up for um, Kaggle type uh, challenges, uh, modeling, AI, machine learning, modeling, uh, leaderboards, prizes, certificates, you know, the drill. So uh, these this initiatives are done and it is important uh, so that you get uh, um, practical studies done, real world data and um, some kind of uh, benchmarks, uh, papers, academic papers, if you are into publishing. Uh, that's actually the next slide. So here you see the special issue publications with IQ Journal. So if you are an academic, uh, if you are a prof, if you are a student, if you are a research scholar into and your publications matters, then pre-standard work in IQ can actually lead to such publications. This is not the only, only 
opportunity for publication i know but the and this is not the only special issue also for my from my tv channel but uh, this provides you with an opportunity to be part of the ecosystem you know go go with the data go with analytics produce kitab code reports slides papers all in one package so you are uh, you are basically playing a team job uh, for example last year we had uh, we had about uh, 22 authors from uh, across the world coming together to write a very comprehensive paper on ai and machine learning science that we did in itu uh if you are and um, if you are paying money paying money for uh, courses in uh, different uh, forums um, i don't know coursera or something like that so if you are doing that then this is probably the place where experts come free of cost uh, give you webinars uh, te- technology webinars and uh, you can find all of them free of cost and let me give you the link here uh, and go back uh, so right so the the, the 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 this link will take you to the ai for good summit along with it there are workshops webinars which are provided by experts including our own <laughs> so you can see brazil's uh, talk and that is uh, that happened the last uh, couple of months back uh, from my it really so there is a bunch of uh, good uh, technology material webinars which are put together as well this is again important in the context of wtsa i will come to that in a bit uh in case you are wondering how to get into our list and um, you know how to attend the meetings easiest way easiest way is to write to us and we will guide you how to do it but this is just a um, let me say a, a trial of what is going to happen uh, to to you once you write to us so step one is that you have a itu dice account you can create it here if in case you already have it if you don't have it then you can create one here uh, write to us and we can guide through all this uh, how to do it no no problem okay Uh, then once you have done this then you select the meeting uh, meeting link which you are interested in here yeah, i have put your meeting registration link from the announcement once again my secretariat colleagues chandrakanta sends out this registration link from us look out for that and uh, and uh, you should be able to get it uh, from the emails or whatsapp groups uh, which helps you to register as well once you have the registration link then you select this boxes over here click whatever you for whatever matters and submit the registration on behalf of tsdsa so we we help you to register the meetings and the registration comes to the designated focal point in which case it is approved so there is the way you get into this uh, game of um, meetings uh then uh, you you your next uh, next complaint is going to be that uh, uh, how do i go to these meetings i don't have funding right that's the question right so there is a fellowship which is provided by itu uh, let me be again very helpful i will put here in the chat window uh, and go back right so there is a fellowship applications which are published please remember this is meeting specific because you go to different places right so meetings happen in different places you go to meet different meeting places so hence it is important that you again look at and track the meeting announcements sent by my colleagues in secretariat to find out which meeting has this fellowship option apply much before because this is first come first served and it has to be approved by tot so that means that this has to be done much beforehand so that you have an opportunity to travel of course you need visa you need you know whatever it takes that is that is why that matters that you plan the fellowship much beforehand and here is a link the participation of women is encouraged i am not saying it is there in this uh, application form you can contact the tsdsi secretariat in case you have questions um then um 
then you are going to tell me uh, once I land there, I don't know how what to do. So then uh, this bridging the standardization gap comes in the picture there. Mm, there are there are courses which I you gives. Uh, this is zero cost. Uh, it's free of cost. And you can actually go through this um, if you, in case you want certificate, of course, you can go through the full length. In case you don't want certificates, that's fine too, but it is informational and you should be able to uh, get information from this, uh, uh, from this uh, courses. So for example, if in case you are a newcomer to ITU, you understand the working, we want to understand the working procedures and then you can actually go to this uh, website. Uh, there, is a, there is a document in the chat window again. You can go there and get this done. Some of my secretariat colleagues are experts. Uh, I mean, they have done the course. I mean, you can contact the secretariat colleagues to um, get guided as to how to do this. So now, um, that brings us approximately to the end of uh, the presentation. I want to show you some websites. I will do that in a bit. But let me just lay the ground for the next uh, part, right? So. We, what we, our context today is that you want to create WTS proposal. But you know, now we are in India, we, we are an inclusive set of people, so we want to create an inclusive uh, WTS proposal. So, what comes into an inclusive WTS proposal? You want to have um, a research part, that is the background of what we do um, solid research, academic, industry, applied individual, uh, whatever research that is, right? So that is that is the first part in my opinion. And second is the local requirements. So there is, there has to be like, you add some spices to it and that spice is actually the local requirements part. You have a set of use cases and that use cases reflect your uh, local requirements. Then there is industry body part, which it's, it's actually looks at the practical applications of Mm, practical applications of um, the, the resolution, the proposal, whatever idea which you have. So th this is that's the next part. That brings in not only the paperwork, but also the, also the um, practical application of the idea. Um, then you might want to have a benchmark using open source. That is the, that's the open source part here. And then finally, we also look at the study groups, focus group, regional group part that we touch on the standardization part, STO standardization part. So all this uh, creates an inclusive WTSA proposal. These are the elements that we, I will touch uh, through during my second part of the presentation. All of them are important. Uh, the research part gives us the solid foundation, the local flavor, gives us uh, specific requirements from India side or the region, uh, you know, Malaysia, Bangladesh, whatever region that we are talking about. The in applications, the practical applications brought in from the industry part and the, and the um, implementation part brought in from the open source. And finally, the normative and supplementary parts brought in from the study groups, regional groups part, right? So I have, I have actually given you a, a spider diagram of uh, an example. So this is, let's take the hot topic, right? Is it the explainable AI, the very hot topic now. If you took, if you are looking at, let's say a theme of resolution around explainable AI, I want to tell like you, I want to have a resolution which says that X, AI has to be explainable. I am just, I'm just trivializing it, but let's let's just go with that, right? So I want to have uh, AI, explainable AI. I want to tell ITU that tomorrow onwards, <laughs> tomorrow onwards AI has to be explainable. So uh, if, if you go with that, if you just play along with me. So if you go with that, then uh, you need a set of verification and test beds to explain that this explainable AI can be verified. Um, that along with it, uh, will tell you, let's say, mm, your own university test bed, what are the requirements which are coming from that, 
your experiences in test setting that up etc etc right so that is the that is a test prep part there is also a data quality aspect which comes in tells are the data sets fair are the data sets balanced are they public are they um, having missing values or are biased right so that that is the data quality aspect are they from real uh, real world reflecting the real world at least so that is the data quality part then comes the computation latency part which looks at let's say if i am applying this ai machine learning at the edge so or at the core network or somewhere else management plane then um uh, do i have enough budget computational uh, time wise budget millisecond wise or um cycles wise i mean computation cycle wise uh, do i have the budget for uh, the latency time latency and the number of cycles um security is another important aspect i want to be trustworthy i want to be able to tell that this is a trustworthy and so on prove prove that it is trustworthy uh, the cost in terms of transport of data if let's say if you are into iot devices which has no computation power to train models or even infer models then you might want to send the data or you might be forced to send the data to some edge device or core network device in worst case where you have uh, ability to train models and send the, in, uh, the inference or trained models back so this is kind of transport of data and models is another aspect that one one needs to consider and then finally i might want to consider private pr- privacy data privacy and other policy issues as well so the, the this combo, combo this is spider combo of things has to be considered when i look at this small concept of explainable ai just taking a simple example i can i can replace this with quantum safe cryptography blockchain whatever is the hot word that you come up with so that is um, that is a taste of what uh, part 1 brings you uh, let me uh, let me before Uh, before i go to um uh, part 2 i want to now uh, look at the some of the uh, website that i talked about uh, which are here so you can see these are the study groups that i mentioned you know and that is our prime minister with dorin who is the secretary general this is from uh prime minister's office this is a website uh, from from pib and this is the wtsa 24 website where you can get documents you can get related events etc etc uh, from uh, wtsa 24 website okay so this is uh, i mean i think you would have already uh, accessed this website so we are good now uh let me now uh switch uh to the second part which is uh, a little bit more um, interesting i should say just a moment let me make sure that you are seeing the right one okay you seem to be all right okay right you are seeing the right one so this is uh, wtsa 2024 now with the background right with the background that we discussed i will now look at uh, how do you contribute to wtsa this uh, i have i have the liberty of eating in the my own time i will try to finish this in half an hour so this is uh um, this is uh, what we planned but we will try to finish it in half an hour so but i covered a little bit of what we discussed in the uh, introduction part also right so contributing to wtsa is slightly different from knowing about wtsa let's look at that uh this i will tell you three stories first one is mr tom second one is no guesses mr jerry 
okay so so tom tom is actually an engineer in a startup uh, tom is actually a domain expert mm-hmm. most probably an introvert and uh, pretty much hands on understands 5g standard you know to the star hot star designer for the products in the startup uh, mostly works with 5g architecture this is the profile resume of tom jerry is different so tom is like this and the, the 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 relationship or what does tom why do tom wants to look at star, the wtsa for all the things right he's in a startup as you can see very busy person uh, very much in demand no time at all but uh, we are telling that and you know, the wtsa is important for him that is because uh, for tom it may be important that are there collaborations in stvos between stvos for example i triple liaison with itu iec liaison with itu 3gpp liaison or an alliance uh, liaison with uh, itu these are important because that gives tom the window into such standards as well as being a, a member of tsdsi so that is the linkage which tom currently does not look at but that is important for tom to give a footstep into global standards and markets uh, uh is the standards awareness in developing countries enabled enough this happens because as a startup representative when tom goes to mark um, product demos right so when tom goes to product demos uh, and uh, demonstrations uh, he faces this question that why you are implementing such a standard why the cost of such a standard implementation is so added to the product etc etc right why is the effort I and mean, let's talk about effort why is the effort more in implementing a particular standard and so on that is why the standards awareness and support in developing countries is important for tom third thing is that a regional network of, of, of experts that i to you in i to you that tom can tap into to get more details on his startup products how what are the alternatives are there um, are there uh, friendly uh, ip which belongs in standards and so on. fair fair ip which belongs in standards and so on which is the best way to implement some things these are questions which um, tom faces believe me i was tom in my last uh, uh, life previous life uh, th- now now this is mrs kim miss kim story miss kim as uh, jerry is coming so so that, that's the next one kim is actually a research scholar in an institute kim is she is studying this just i made it up quantum impact of ai enabled block there is no such thing it, i just made it up so there, that's the futuristic topic that that that's there kim's research is in final stages and publishing is critical for her so in such cases what is important why do we talk about wtsa to kim in her studies kim has noticed that there are certain technologies that affect sustainable development goals for example energy efficiency reduction in antennas so that is, that is a very important topic ran consumes 30% of energy if i if i understand right i may be wrong with the number but a large percentage of the energy in the network is spent in the ran and the study of such aspects to to increase the efficiency of radio technologies is an important aspect which will help hit us in the green emissions sustainable development goals so this is important for kim and what 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 can be done to better distribute the resources and align the road maps of various standards groups and research groups this is the collaboration between standards groups and research groups and that how do you distribute and align the road maps is important which will helps us to uh, bring innovations from research groups to standard groups and so on uh open source as i told you is very important kim is leveraging open source what how to share her best practices with the global community is another area where kim can actually help us uh, with the wtsa jerry is a is a policy advisor uh, there um um 
representing the ministry in a member state of ITU. Um, and uh, Jerry usually reviews uh, contributions as a head of delegation to ITUT. Uh, Jerry also advises the regulatory bodies related to use of technology in society. That's Jerry's resume. Uh, so why, why Jerry needs to worry about WTSA? Because there are procedures in working groups in ITU that helps or hinders progress of consensus. So when you sit together, take decisions, how are those decisions impacted? How are those decisions taken? Those are important for Jerry. Uh, in Jerry's experience, has the data gathered, meeting shows, downward or upward tending value of standards. So this, this is important to reflect in WTSA because this shows that are we doing a good job or a bad job with respect to creating uh, and advocating standards. Uh, does Jerry get enough inputs to analyze impact of technology? and make meaningful conclusions on the use of technologies to bring it back to regulatory bodies. That's another important aspect that Jerry looks at. So uh, switching gears, uh, switching gears, uh, how, how this, uh, all these are exactly reflected in the resolution. So here you see some real um, uh, uh, meat or, or vegetables of for 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 that matter uh, of the of the content of resolutions and uh, you can see the the stories that i mentioned previously this one is from tom that you see on the left side and how it is reflected in each of the resolutions that is what i, I call it reflections from wtsa resolutions how does a resolution look like so this is how a resolution look like First, you will have a verb that's considering, recognizing, instructing, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then you have a content which tells what are you considering. <laughs> so for example, here you see considering there is increased participation in interested entities in standard making process. And there is enabling sectors to admit participation of entities as an associate. So remember, remember, Tom stands for a startup. He's extremely busy. He's part of the startup, remember. So as uh, sometimes funding is a problem too for startups. So as an associate member of ITU, it makes sense for Tom to uh, track the standards as an associate member. So that's why this is important for Tom. Uh, and what does it finally lead to? Necessary logistics for participation of associates in the work of ITU, including possible impacts for study group reorganization. Look at that. So that's a very powerful statement, which tells the DSP director of ITU that what to do. So Tom basically gets to uh, control, influence is a better word, influence the, uh, the director of DSP to make sure that stand, startups are able to uh, participate, not only participate, but also a possible impact of uh, possible impact of standardization that is 31. Uh, just uh, I have a list of URLs. I will send this one to you so that you can look at it offline. There you go. Uh, possible impacts uh, of study group reorganization. Uh, what happens to Kim? Uh, Kim is actually doing all this. One of the important things that I pick up on is open source. So open source resolution 90. You can see here, Resolution 90. Resolution 90 has this kind of text. I, this is just cut and paste. It's, it's not complete text. If you want the complete text, you should look at um, the chat window. <laughs> so you can look at the chat window and you should be able to get the complete text of 90. Uh, so let me see. Yeah, so 90 looks at the promoting, undertaking research and development, blah, 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 open source software, affordable equipment and service. We all want that, right? So that's what free and open source software. And finally, it instructs all applicable study groups of ITU to consider output on open source, study the value of using open source to develop reference implementations of ITUT recommendations. That's a very powerful statement also. That's a really powerful statement which tells ITUT to basically make reference implementations using open source. 
<laughs> so that's a, that's a very interesting uh, thing for Kim, which uh, basically provides her with the platform to share her experience of doing exactly that. Uh, let's not forget Jerry. Jerry is actually uh, doing all this stuff on the left side, uh, but then on the right side, I have 92, resolution 92, which actually resolves to invite TSAG for um, coordination between uh, strengthening, strengthening the non-radio aspects and so on. And it instructs the study groups of ITU to strengthen collaboration with standardization activities in order to ensure productive and practical standard solutions for global ICT industry. So everybody has some value uh, that either they take or bring or do both. So now what are the key takeaways from this part? So the key takeaways from this part are that practical problems which are faced by members is important for us in the WTSM, right? And then the value derived from an inclusive diversity pool like in India. In India, that's the thing, right? Diversity is the thing. So if you have an inclusive diversity pool, that's invaluable because now you have more sample space. Then resolutions contain clear background descriptions and inputs what exactly needs to be done. They set the direction of study and various parts of ITU including study groups are influenced. Okay, now I want to look at the sum of the sample 2020 resolutions so that you have some idea about what we did, what is possible, what is not possible, what are the comments which happened, etc, etc. So this is actually a public document. Uh, let me see, I have a link to that. I believe I have a link to that somewhere. Uh, just a moment. Um, so there you go. So th there is the link to that. Uh, it's actually a public document. Resolution 89, which promotes uh, the use of information and uh, ICT basically to bridge the financial inclusion gap. Financial inclusion gap in banking and so on. So, um, so in this part, there is uh, uh, there is uh, uh, there is a there are there are there are, there is a recalling and considering parts. I, as I told you, there is a verb and the and the and the paragraph which follows it. Recalling that financial inclusion is a key enabler for reducing poverty, boosting pro pro prosperity, and so on. Uh, then use of mobile phone technologies is an enabler. And considering that um, uh, the need for regulators to collaborate with one another, blah, 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 is important. So here is the change which happened in resolution 89 in 2020 resolution. So one is that resolves to conduct studies and develop standards uh, for consumer protection, quality of service, big data, security of digital financial service transactions, that is the resolution and instructs the TSB director in collaboration with other directors to use store usage of crowdsourcing. Uh, so that, that's very interesting because uh, just few months, uh, few last few months, actually summer, uh, Abhishek must be knowing this, that we did a project with uh, IIT Madras, Professor Jalia, to do exactly this crowdfunded, uh, crowdsourced data uh, collection project. It's very interesting. So yeah, so there is there is a there is a change which happened in eighty nine. That's how it looks like in the case of um, uh, financial inclusion. Similarly, there is a resolution forty four. You can see the link here. Uh, forty four is bridging standardization gap between developing and developed uh, developed countries. There is a, there is a material on the left side which I'm not going into. Uh, there is a resource which uh, that that brings in. The change uh, for the for the for this particular um, resolution, which looks at uh, promoting engagement of local experts and uh, train the trainer. This is actually from our colleagues Bindu and so on. They put in the effort to bring in this kind of bridging the standardization gap inputs into uh, 44. This is what we proposed uh, uh, in 2020. 
so th this is is a very important input to train the trainer courses and uh, promote the engagement of local experts very interesting input as well uh 70 70 is on disabilities and uh, persons with specific needs um uh, professor pradeep tapiswas so he's uh, he is uh, leading he was leading this change in 2020 resolution which looked at this kind of things he was already active in study group 9 and study group 16 which actually takes into account uh, and results based on such changes uh 55 55 is on gender equality gender equality considering this uh, uh, gender gap and so on um standardization plays an important role in global globalization and effective development so that Uh, and statistically very few women participate gender digital divide is also an important thing given that we invite member states and sector members to encourage actively support ict education so that's uh, for girls and assign mentors for women delegates this is another interesting input from pamela and the colleagues uh, in the last uh, wtsa so uh, the inputs are there in addition there was a sample um, there was a new resolution that we put in which which brings in equitable access to technology uh, for um just a moment okay uh, for for uh, equitable access to technology and the, the, the recognizing the development and the development of fair and inclusive artificial intelligence technology so that is that is the technology that we talked about this one was proposed and selected from pc and we discussed this in asia pacific uh, preparatory group as well uh, and uh, what are the key takeaways here the key takeaways here are the wtsa resolutions modifications of new existing resolutions and proposing new resolutions both are possible overall background knowledge of resolutions resources open source are needed and here is where we should be able to help and it is important to formulate the resolution in a impactful manner so that there is the uh, that those are the key takeaways here now let us look at Uh, let's look at the key uh, comments and counter comments uh, which we encountered um which we encountered during uh, during the um just a moment i need uh, just a moment all right i should be back in business okay uh yeah so let's look at some comments and counter comments so resolution 70 when we looked at this resolution 70 uh what we found is that there are some uh, I, i mean i i already told you that uh, um we we proposed to study group 16 work taking into account study group 16 work and uh, and uh, uh, the corresponding uh, work in um, study group 9 and so on right so you remember this is what we discussed in the previous slide 
but the comments which we got were around what what are the existing works in this area first of all and whether your proposal is related to which study I mean, is it 16 mayan or something else so uh, what we realized is that doing this homework related to existing work is a bond that's the first part and secondly the 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 gap analysis academic papers standards they need to be studied in the background advantages and disadvantages of the proposal needs to be clear i mean distinguishing is not sufficient you need to be clear about the advantages and disadvantages of the proposal that we are making um let's look at this this resolution uh, on equitable access to technology that i talked to you about in this case uh in case of equitable access to technology the comments were around intentions and impacts are not clear that's the first part and then there are new terms which are which are used in the in the, in the resolution proposal which are not clear and some of the proposals are duplicative with ongoing standards so these were the some of the comments that we got and the way to mitigate such comments are around you you clarify the concept with white papers beforehand itself do the homework in popularizing getting the definitions done in itu documents clearly mention the relationship with ongoing work items if any because this is a global stage you 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 basically can't ignore anything it's important that you look at uh, the relation and you do your homework with respect to the existing documents before you hit the resolution stage let's look at 55 55 had comments and counter comments around this firstly uh, we we talked about right encouraging actively support um, uh, women's education girls ed- girls education and so on this should be done with funding considerations this is important uh, wording change i mean everybody understands that that's the thing but the wording change should be done such that the funding considerations are considered before you uh, propose this and it has to be part of the wording as well another thing is the regional group role of regional groups i mean sushil ji already mentioned the regional group and uh, i i showed you the regional groups in the first part of the presentation so it's important to keep that background in mind before we propose this uh, this kind of um, wordings in the resolutions include the role of regional groups as well so the first thing the 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 learnings here are it's important to understand the operational constraints and problems of itu and secondly coordination and support from regional partners are needed i mean uh, for example in workshops like this workshops like this can be utilized task forces uh, can be utilized to bring in support and coordination from regional partners uh, wherever possible that's important uh, to get the resolution passed uh, the stage so what are the key takeaways here uh, they what are the existing works in this area and how is your proposal different has to be very clear Uh, do the homework related to the existing work you know gap analysis academic paper standard study everything advantages and disadvantages need to be clear is this proposal related to study group something or study group something so you need to know the study group scope and terms of reference i showed you in the previous part there is a chat in the uh, there is a link in the chat window which explains um the link uh, explains the study group pages and so on so you have to go there and study the t- terms of reference and scope before you propose the corresponding resolutions the previous experience in itu helps and that's where secretary of tspsi should be able to help uh when you look at uh, duplicative proposals it's important that you attend all preparatory meetings and but that's not possible so you need partners you need to attend some meetings whereas your buddies attend some other so you need statistical multiplexing where when you sleep somebody attends and somebody else sleeps then you attend so that's that's what we do in standards meetings and uh, and again in preparatory meetings also studying of output documents is very important it gives you the um, material to defend 
uh, against this kind of comments and so on. Uh, again, shifting gear, mm, I will use the last uh, few minutes to look at what are the domain-specific views on WTSA resolutions. The domain-specific views are basically uh, from uh, from study groups. So I told you about study groups. We looked at uh, the website, and then um, uh, this this kind of uh, domain specific WTSA views are taken by uh, study groups, especially if you look at this one. This one is from uh, study group 17 and uh, in a um, few days back actually. A few days back we had a meeting with the study group 17 and uh, this study group 17 is consolidating the scope the scope question means the scope of uh, work which happens in the next study period, that is 2025 to 2028 as input for WTSA. So uh, what I'm trying to say is each study group has already started looking at domain specific views on providing inputs for the next study period that is 2025 to 2028. So six conference calls has already happened between May and July to address initial points of guidance for post-2024 work. And that's why it's important. Um, that's, uh, unfortunately, I don't have the link for that, but the link is here. <laughs> so you can look at the link and uh, you can actually go to this document under study group 17. So uh, that is one thing. And then we have, uh, we have a compilation of uh, the verbs that I told you about. Resource, instructs, TSB director, everything that the, each study group has been told something through the verbs corresponding to it has been compiled. And this is available as a baseline text for preparation guideline of non resolutions. This again is there in this link. Mm. Maybe I will send it uh, later offline through my colleagues or write to me, I can give you the link. That is uh, That provides the baseline text for draft for preparation guideline on resolutions. Uh, study group five is, has been busy as well. They created an ad hoc group. So just like the task force that uh, Abhishek, Abhishek mentioned at the beginning, Study group five has an ad hoc group to prepare input arguments for WSA for the next study period. Uh, this is uh, maybe a couple of months back. And this looks at the resolution 72, 73, and 79 with measurement assessment concerns, ICT, uh, e-waste, uh, etc. So and methods for treating it. These are the main resolutions that they are looking at. Uh, study group 13 has been busy as well. They have been looking at the next study period. NSP stands for next study period. The NSP report on the NSP ad hoc session is provided. And that link is here with the discussion paper and so on. Uh, it provides comments and amendments uh, from a reporter's perspective to the text of new question. There is a new scope provided for next study period. And that question is proposed for the next study period under study group 13. That means that from 2025 to 2028 or post 2024, the study group 13 will look at an additional scope of things as well. So if you want to look at what is that additional scope, you need to read this particular document. What I'm trying to say is that the, what is the study group's view on the next study period? That is 2024 to 2028. Are there changes to Have we lost Vishnu's audio? Just, yeah, I think he lost. Uh, we'll just give it a minute for him to join back.
uh, we will take another minute uh, uh, to get back to Vishnu and see if he can join back. Vishnu is joining, uh, rejoining. Let's give him another minute. All right. Technical difficulties. Uh, sorry about that. And thanks to Asif. Um, where was all right? All right, um, let me see. Okay, uh, as if can you see key takeaways four? It's visible, Vishnu. Thank you, thank uh, you. yes, sir. thank you, thank you, Vishnu. thank you. Asif. Yeah, so that this is the key takeaways four. Um, does, does the are there new questions to be proposed, as in the case of study group 13? And does convergence need collaboration? So that means new relationship between ITU and other SPOs, as I explained to you previously, IEEE, 3GPP, or Alliance, whatever that is. And mapping to new sustainable development goals are required or not. So that is uh, another point. So coming back to our flower picture, right? So this is a WTSA how to create an inclusive proposal in this flower picture we looked at uh, uh, we looked at the um, research part which is a gap analysis done via peer reviewed papers um, jerry who is leading this study group delegation for next study period as we discussed in the case of uh, study group um, 13 uh, sharing of best practices from him towards open source for this open source part. Uh, and easier access to standards for Tom, uh, that is for the industry body standards part. 
and local use cases and user specific extensions and policy inputs for the local requirements part. So coming back to this picture, you see how it is mapped. So basically, the, my last th point is that to create an inclusive WTSA proposal, there are two options. One is that you start with a problem statement, <laughs> which is basically that my boss wants a WTSA resolution. So yeah, I'm just joking. So you have two options here. Right, let, me, let me just handle option one first. So option one is you start with the WTSA task force that uh, Abhishek talked, told you about. You go through TC coordination. Uh, you take the secretariat help for registration and all that headaches that comes with it. You start with the APT preparation meetings coordinated once again by secretariat. And finally, yeah, you have something to show. There is another option. In your shower, think hard. <laughs> all the best. So that is, that is the two options that you have. Thank you very much. You can write to me or my secretary colleagues. Uh, Bishak is uh, handling the, um, the the task force. And uh, thank you very much. And we, we hope to see you, uh, Tom and Jerry, and the other other partners as, as this, this flower picture shows. Uh, we hope to see you as part of the uh, our process and the task force. I hope I hope that some of you actually push through resolutions. Uh, I'll be very happy to help. Thank you very much. Uh, back to you, Abhishek. Thanks, Vishnu. We will take a couple of questions that are already there in the session, Vishnu. Uh, one is with Karan requesting, where can I find latest information about IT work, uh, WTSA, and how can I get to know about WTSA events? I think you've already answered it through the multiple mailers that the Secretariat sends out as well as connecting back other than mails. You can, you're can you always welcome to connect to the Secretariat to get these inputs. The second one from Harpreet is very interesting. Uh, would you like to throw some light on it? Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Harpreet is exactly what I discussed as Tom. So the, the, the non-member and the small organization, especially startups like uh, so on. Mm, there is an important role. There is an important role, Harpreet. Uh, don't, don't miss that role. Uh, TSTSI, uh, if you are a member of TSTSI, there is a there is a easy path, uh, as I showed you. We provide you with uh, mentorship. This task force that Abhishek mentioned is, is a great opportunity to collaborate as a small organization, SMSC, and the uh, towards a startup, if you're a startup or an academy, a small lab somewhere, right? So that's a possibility. Uh, if, you, if, you, um, if you are not a member of the SDSI, then I suggest you talk to Secretariat or myself and we can find a way in which if there is a, if there is a great idea that you have and you are into the standardization process, passionate about it and so on, we can always find a way uh, to, to bring your contributions in uh, I'm sure uh, there are leaders here who can take care of that. Yeah. So in either way, my my answer is talk to us. We can enable it. Thank you. And I think we have time for one more question. If somebody has, uh, there was a chat feedback that one of the links working. Uh, I'm not on a PC right now. Vishnu, can you check it out once? Mm, ah, okay, okay, okay. That is uh, resolution 89. Uh, no worries. I will uh, find it and uh, put that uh, resolution link in the chat. No worries. No. So there you go. Thank you. So if we will give it a time for another question or shall we move to the next setup? Any other questions, please? There is one question in the uh, Q and A tabs. Share the timelines from Ms. Bindu. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The, that's a that's a great question as well. Mm, so the timelines are the for the preparatory meetings. Right? It starts. It has already started. I I showed you the preparations done by the study group uh, uh, seventeen, thirteen, five, and so on. Right? So that those those preparatory meetings are already happening. APT preparatory meetings. Uh, there is the for Asia Pacific that has al also started. Uh, so time is ticking, I should say. Uh, the the I think the window of opportunity for us to influence any particular thing will end by end of this uh, year. So we, if we have reasonable proportion uh, pro uh, proposals, we should be ready with the reasonable proposals by uh, say end of the year or early end of the year. I, I would say October, November time frame, and then. Uh, then it is a little late to influence high value things. It is always possible to do editorial. It is always possible to do uh, small changes. But it is if you want to put new proposals, if you want to really uh, change change the game, then it is important that you start early, and that is it. that is by end of the year, I would say, uh, so that you are in line with uh, the preparatory meetings aligned with the, the cadence of the Asia APT preparatory meetings, which happens, mm, they will close by mid of next year. The 2024 uh, um, uh, is, is the WTSA, so mid of next year, uh, all, all outputs deliverables will be closed. Another one in the chat section, sir, from Mr. Umesh Singh. It's, what is the state of his uh, status of a spectrum sharing in India? The question is from Umesh Singh. That's a good question. I, I don't have the answer to that question, unfortunately. We can probably discuss this in. Um, Maybe the TPs, technical plenaries, or something. <laughs> Abhishek, if you have comments. No, no. We are more on the standardization part, so probably we may not be the right people to answer this question. Uh, maybe somebody from DOT or other uh, other groups in DOT beyond TEC might be better aware on this. Sushil sir or Avinash sir, you want to pitch in there or? Uh, not on this I group. think uh, it should be discussed in the relevant group. It is this group is not. Yeah, uh, sure, uh, not here. Uh, we are discussing on WTSA. Why to deal such type of questions? Sure, sure. Fine. So with this, uh, we would uh, we still have time to take one more question. We can, if there are questions, we can take it. Please stay with the WTSA and ITU related queries. Fine, so we will move on to the item which is uh, concluding remarks and the next step for uh, the WTSA by Avinash sir. Uh, can we, yeah, Avinash sir is currently serving as DDG Convergence and Broadcasting, TEC. Uh, he, an ITS officer from the 1992 batch. He has extensive experience in telecom, information technology, and broadcasting while serving in various positions in government of India. Avinash sir, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, so I would request uh, Jaskira to kindly share my slides if possible. So uh, while the slides are being shared, I would thank uh, TSGSI for uh, uh, organizing this awareness workshop. It is a very timely uh, session a very timely event because uh, as Vishnuji mentioned that we have very limited time the WTSA is more than I think 14 or 15 months away but uh, we have to work and decide fast and we have just a few months 
to take our views on uh, resolutions and other things. So uh, thank you, TSD Sai, for this uh, uh, event. And uh, my previous speakers, both uh, uh, Vishnuji and uh, Sushil Kumar sir, have already talked in detail about uh, what needs to be done, how it has to be done. So now I don't have too much points to cover. And I just have just two slides, uh, as you can see on the screen also. So the first slide, I will just talk about uh, gen general aspects about ITUT and uh, contributions and others. And the second slide will be specifically on uh, the forthcoming WTSA, which is being hosted by India. So uh, very first thing is that uh, when we talk of ITUT, then TEC uh, has an important role to play. TEC is the Telecommunication Engineering Center, which is the technical arm of DOT. And uh, TEC is the nodal... Uh, body for ITUT related activities, including the uh, national contributions to ITU. Uh, so we uh, have the uh, different types of memberships in ITUT. So we have the state members, uh, member states, uh, which is like the countries represented in ITU. And also we have sector members like TSDSI is there. We have some other organizations uh, and we also have the academia members. So Contributions can be given directly by the sector members also, by the academia members also. But uh, uh, when the contributions have to go through uh, the as a nation or as a national contributions, then uh, they have to be routed through the uh, national working groups in TEC. So uh, TEC has uh, constituted various uh, national working groups mirroring the ITUT study groups. So like we have 11 study groups uh, at ITUT, so all uh, similar uh, national working groups with exactly the same uh, rules and uh, terms of reference are created in TEC. So the uh, working, national working groups are having members from academia, from industry, from uh, uh, startups uh, and uh, R&D bodies, uh, other stakeholders and also like uh, TSDSI and uh, the members of TSDSI are also members of various and, uh, national working groups and we just uh, are very happy to add more uh, experts in our national working groups. So like when we are talking of uh, a national uh, contribution, then uh, uh, these can be routed through different uh, bodies, different organizations. They are deliberated in the national working groups. And uh, once uh, the NWG recommends it, then uh, it goes from TEC and to Department of Telecommunication, where after getting approval of the competent authority, they are submitted to ITU uh, for uh, further deliberations at the ITU level. So uh, as Sushil sir mentioned, and Vishnuji also shared a photograph, TEC uh, recently was involved in hosting of the study group nine meeting in India, which was a physical event like it was hybrid but more or less a more physical event and also just recently that uh, study group 20 regional group meeting was very successfully hosted again uh, under chairmanship of Sushil sir. So uh, that is about TEC and uh, how uh, we can contribute through TEC as national uh, uh, contributions. So uh, there is a need for increased participation in ITU standards extension activities uh, and it is very much possible because now remote participation is also available uh, after covid so uh, uh, this time fortunately the meeting wts is being held in india but uh, various itut study group meetings are being held at different parts of the world uh, maybe some meeting is planned in geneva some is in other uh, country uh, but if remote participation is also available, so we can participate from our offices also. And uh, uh, we have to uh, also enhance our contributions in ITU as far as possible. Uh, just uh, if we recall, uh, our Honorable Minister had mentioned that India should have almost 10% uh, contributions in 6G related uh, uh, standards. So. Uh, this requires more contributions. We also have to think uh, whether the existing work items are sufficient or we have to create more India specific or uh, work items related to our work that is important. 
and at the same time it is also important that we identify that which work or which activity is appropriate to be taken to itu and which work or activity or research is more suitable for other uh, sdos like 3gpp or 1m2m or ieee so that uh, uh, discretion or that uh, decision is also very important like if we take everything to itu uh, and also to 3gpp so basically we have to be judicious about this decision making also uh so uh, we uh, have to create more specialized units and manpowers in different organizations for standardization and uh, as uh, chairman tsdsi uh, uh, ng suranian ji has mentioned some time back in one of the workshops that uh, all uh, uh, organizations should have a specialized unit for standardization like uh, they are doing lots of research work lot of development work but also a focus on standardization and contribution to international uh, sdos is an uh, essential part uh, if we want to say uh, increase our say in uh, global products and standards so now what exactly can we contribute vishnu ji has already elaborated in great detail but just to uh, give more uh, inputs we can take uh, more use cases we can uh, take the customized indian solutions to itu uh, which could be for wider circulation for similar developing countries so it need not be every time uh, some new uh, standard or some new uh, innovative thing but a lot of innovative thing that we are doing which could be use cases or like that can be taken to itu just to give two three very quick examples uh, from the study group 9 so uh, one example is that uh, though there is a recommendation on conditional access system downloadable conditional access system for a very long time and uh, uh, recently uh, try had mandated for certain parameters to be mandatory and uh, uh, in the conditional access system been deployed in the country and then it uh, was uh, try assigned that work to tc for testing and certification of conditional access systems so tc developed the test guides in consultation with the stakeholders including academia researchers uh, oems and uh, broadcasters msos and every everyone involved including the ministry of broadcasting and uh, tri and other officers so now we have the uh, indian uh, scenario where we have the test guide we have the requirements available with us so we took those things to itu and uh, it required a bit of convincing that why we want a new recommendation but finally uh, a new work item work was created uh, it was specifically a recommendation on, fact on factual subscriber based reporting so like uh, any pilferage in the uh, revenue because of misreporting or uh, piracy how those could be addressed and uh, uh, more or less in two or three meetings all uh, our contributions were accepted and now it has been it has uh, become a recommendation of itu and recently try mandated uh, that it should be mandatory for the uh, uh, msos to have the certified cas only so basically now the requirement from uh, india has become a recommendation at uh, itu level also another quick example is like uh, we already have one uh, itu recommendation on hybrid setup box so we shared that recommendation with the manufacturers of hybrid setup box in the country and asked them that is this recommendation as per your products or are your products meeting these recommendations or not and so we got lots of inputs uh, there were some parameters in the uh, in the uh, recommendation which were obsolete and there were many new features with our uh, uh, oem said uh, added uh, due to market requirements so we initiated that work and now that revision of uh, this uh, itu recommendation ja298 is almost complete maybe in the next meeting it will become a revised recommendation so these are just few examples how we can take our uh, solutions or use cases to itu another important part is to create ipr and standard essential patents through standardization this is a very important aspect that uh, uh, unless we do uh, 
research and then we do the patenting part and then those patents should be pushed in the standards through various contributions and continuous uh, uh, persuasion at the standards bodies. Only then we'll get uh, fruits of the research work that is being done by our academia, R&D organizations and uh, industry. And in fact, uh, just last month, uh, a workshop was held by DOT, TEC, TSDSI, we both were there and uh, it was a very successful event, almost 1500 people attended either physically or online. Uh, so the focus was again on how to create SCPs and uh, IPRs and all those things. One more point is that all organizations should hold meetings in their organizations. It is not necessary that we have to do it only uh, through TSDSI or only through TEC uh, national working groups. They can also deliberate within their organizations about various study groups, various focus groups and other uh, meetings and then uh, uh, see how we can contribute. These are some of the general thoughts on how we have to, uh, how we can contribute in ITU. Next slide. So uh, just talking quickly of the WTSA 2024 event. So we should understand that WTSA is a very, very important uh, uh, event for ITUT because it sets the agenda for the next four years for ITUT. So like whatever will be the agenda for ITUT from 24 to 2028, 20, those four years will be decided in this WTSA. And because India is hosting, it is very important for us also. And the importance can be understood from the fact that our Honorable Prime Minister himself announced the dates and venue of this uh, event. And then our Secretary Telecom, uh, in fact, himself unveiled the logo of uh, WTSA 2024. So this highlights how much importance is being given to this by our uh, government. As already talked by the previous speakers, uh, we have to work on uh, what resolutions uh, need to be uh, there, whether we, these existing ones need any tweaking, any amendment, whether we need more resolutions. So we need India specific uh, uh, needs should be taken care of. So it requires that the existing resolutions are immediately studied. We find out whether there are any gaps, whether they require any amendments or whether any new resolutions are required. As Sushil sir mentioned, TC is already constituting uh, groups uh, here uh, where these resolutions would be studied. And then uh, basically uh, the NWGs would be the nodal for coordinating because uh, they represent all the stakeholders for that particular study group. So uh, that mechanism is already being put in place in TEC. Once we identify that what needs to be amended, how uh, we have to move forward is that uh, uh, we have to build consensus within the country that could be done through NWG meetings. And uh, then uh, once that consensus is there, we go, go to APT, take support of APT. There we get support of almost 38 countries. So our resolutions to ITU would be, become very uh, like uh, important. So uh, the resolutions could be on different aspects. Like if we see APT, they have three different working groups. So resolutions could also be considered in those, the uh, changes in resolutions could also be considered on those three lines. Like one is about working methods, another is about work organization, and third is about uh, regulatory or policy and standardization related issues. So as Vishnuji mentioned that uh, study group wise, we can see whether any new question needs to be added, whether the scope or term of reference of the question needs to be changed, some new topics need to be included. Similarly, we can also comment on uh, the working methods and the working uh, work organization, like suppose some aspect is not at all covered in any of the study groups. Something is there in ITU or whether it should be there in ITUT, any other thing. 
or whether the hierarchy of chair vice chair all those things if you want to suggest something that is also quite possible and it is a very good opportunity because as social sir mentioned we have four vice chairs in the apt uh, working group uh, at this moment uh, for this purpose so uh, you can take uh, this to apt also another important aspect is that we start working on identifying the experts and persons who uh, we can project as uh, nominees from india for various chairs and vice chair positions for various study groups that would become vacant and uh, the elections would be held during this wtsa it is important because uh, uh, it is not a nomination it is an election so if the person is known to the outside world to the other countries and so it is easier to get support from uh, other nations for our candidates the aim should be to have more and more positions occupied by uh, indians uh, in the uh, next four years of itut similarly uh, we have to organize more such run up events to create awareness this is a very good initiative but we should have more events so that awareness is created uh, we should have a strategy that all ict events uh, to be held in future are like creating awareness of wtsa 2024 at the same time like when wtsa is being held we have to showcase our progress india's progress success stories of various flagship schemes uh, we can start uh, thinking about how uh, we can do that we can identify the indian startups indigenous products uh, other things that can be showcased at that time so these are some of the very uh, few thoughts that what preparatory things we can do for wtsa uh, starting now itself the idea is that uh, how to make wtsa 24 a success and also uh, how we can drive the agenda of itut for the next 4 years from 2024 to 2028 and uh, the important part is that we have to work uh, uh, in a collaborative mode and not uh, in silos like we are doing some work here someone else doing some work there so that is it is always good that we work in a collaborative manner so that's all i would like to say thank you yes, sir <clears throat> thank you very much uh we are slightly over time uh, uh so i would like to thank all the speakers and for joining and interacting uh, kindly do provide your feedback on the workshop at the link uh, in window and we will be emailing the same shortly thanks to everybody namaste